and long-term AI use is going to completely destroy your lipid panel. It's going to completely destroy your bones. It's going to completely destroy your cardiovascular health, your heart. It's going to destroy so much stuff. It's going to be like a slow poison over time. What have you learned in all your study, research, and experience about uh, oestrogen in regards to optimization? Okay. And if this is your first time here, make sure to subscribe so you can learn more about fitness and nutrition, hormones and anti-aging, all this to optimize your life overall. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. There's a couple of things that I've said in the group that I probably could have said better. Uh, maybe some, some stuff I've said wrong. And I realized that I was contradicting myself in my head a, a bit. And I've, and I've spoken to a number of people, in particular, uh, Dr. Nichols. And now I've, I've gotten some kind of clarification. For all you guys that are taking an AI and worrying about estrogen, uh, for those who don't know what an AI is, an AI is an aromatase inhibitor. An aromatase inhibitor basically prevents or helps to prevent testosterone converting into estrogen, testosterone being the male hormone estrogen being referred to as the female hormone. Uh, women obviously have a lot more estrogen, a little bit of testosterone with men, it's, it's, it's the other way around. What men do not understand, majority of men that don't understand, as soon as they're talking about E2 issues, E2 being estradiol, is that the majority of the health benefits that we are getting from TRT is the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. Okay, so libido, uh, erection strength, uh, cognition, better sleep, bone health, uh, um, you know, or bone mineral density, um, your, your, your lipids, your, your cholesterol, visceral fat, these are all improved by taking DHT because the testosterone that we take gets converted into estrogen. It's the actual, the raising of the estrogen with optimizing t t uh, testosterone levels, of course, that are providing the majority of these benefits, these health benefits. If you do anything to control estrogen whatsoever, you are now reducing these benefits. So if you say, well, you know, I wanna have my, my testosterone in the range of 20 to 30, because that's what I read on the, all the bro science forums that I go on, because that's what they are, they're bro science, and they're not evidence-based. Um, you guys want to know where this whole range of 20 to 30, that's where everyone says, I try to keep my E2 in a range of 20 to 30. Now, where did this come from? This came from a study, a single study, that was done using older men that were obese and had congestive heart failure. They studied the level of estrogen and testosterone and everything else in these men. And they saw that the ones that had the highest levels of estrogen died, and the ones that had the lowest levels of estrogen died. Okay, so low estrogen is not good. For those of you who have ever taken too much of an AI and crashed your estrogen levels, you know what that feels like. Been there, done that, it sucks, okay? You feel like crap, you have no libido, you can't have an erection if you got paid a million dollars, you can't sleep, your, your joints hurt, you don't wanna get out of bed, you just feel like shit, you feel terrible, okay? You know what that's like. So that is not good. The guys that were the worst off in this study were the, the, the fattest, the most obese. They had congestive heart failure, they had liver disease, they had kidney failure, uh, they had all these issues. and what happens is the more fat that you put on, the more fat, the more obese you get, the higher your estrogen gets, okay? It's, it's just what happens. The more fat that you have, the more of, of something called aromatase you wind up with. And aromatase is basically an enzyme that converts testosterone to estrogen. So the more fat that you get, the more aromatase you have, and the more of your testosterone will convert into estrogen. So they looked at these big fat guys that had heart failure, liver disease, and all this type of stuff. And they said, well, look at these guys. These guys have estrogen levels above a certain amount. And those are the ones that tend to be dying. So I guess high estrogen is to be avoided because look, these guys have high estrogen and they're dying. These guys that have low estrogen, well, they're dying. 
So I guess we got to keep it in this range. You know, in this range here, the guys tend to kind of stay alive. The thing that you got to understand is they were looking at the estrogen as being the reason why these guys were dropping dead. And it wasn't that at all. The reason the estrogen was high is because they were fat. When you're fat, your estrogen is going to go up. Estrogen is an innocent bystander. Estrogen is like, it's just there, okay? The reason they were dropping dead is because they were obese. These were the most obese, the most sick, the, the cholesterol levels through the roof, uh, uh, fatty liver, visceral fat like you wouldn't believe. These are the things that are going to kill you with time. And what a lot of people don't understand is estrogen actually helps to reduce this from occurring, uh, helps to eliminate this from occurring in the first place. So what did they do later? Fast forward a couple of years, they took these guys with heart failure and, and what did they do? They, they gave them testosterone. And what happened? Well, they got better. Their estrogen went up, they got better. Why? Well, because the guys in this study were, it, the whole study was done on, on baseline guys. So basically it were, it were sick men that weren't taking any testosterone at all and they had high levels of estrogen because they were fat. And that's where the whole study was. And that's where this whole range comes from. And it's nonsense because as soon as you give these guys testosterone, they start improving and everything starts improving. Now they've got more energy. They've got more strength. They've got more. Now they want to do more stuff. They start getting out more. They start getting more. And their, their estrogen is still up there. How come they're not dying anymore? That The estrogen hasn't changed. Estrogen is so high. And as they're losing weight and whatever, yes, their estrogen is going to go down. But it wasn't the estrogen killing them. It was the heart disease. So this whole notion of range, you have to just completely throw it out of the window. It is irrelevant. It does not apply. You don't have to worry about it. The docs in the group don't even measure it anymore. There's one guy in particular. I'm not going to bring up his name. We argued to death about estrogen and estradiol all this, and NAS and all this type of stuff. And he was adamant. He says, as soon as I stop the AI, my estrogen goes up and I get all these issues. I worked with this guy so much, and I finally convinced him E2 was not, as, it was not the issue. His estrogen now is over 100. The guy is basically a boner with legs. His libido is through the roof. He's never felt better. Well, we're not controlling his estrogen. He was taking NAI forever. Um, how come, why is he okay? There's so many guys in the group with estrogen over 100, okay, and they're fine. My estrogen last time I measured it, which I'm not even going to measure anymore, is what four? It was 45. Um, the thing you got to keep in mind is that it's the estrogen itself that is giving you all of these health benefits. And by lowering it, even in the slightest, you are reducing these health benefits. Even if you want to reduce in the slightest, you look at the bodybuilders that are taking tons of, of these aromatase inhibitors, these AIs, and you look at them, well, they look great. Yes, but they're taking 16, 17 different types of drugs. And if they didn't take this aromatase inhibitor, um, they'd probably grow breasts because they are an absolute hormone disaster. So you look at them from the outside and you're like, wow, I would love to look like this guy one day. Yeah, physically on the outside, they look great. Inside, they are a disaster, okay? If you did a DEXA, a DEXA scan on these guys, to, to measure their bone mineral density, they'll probably have the bones of a 90-year-old woman. You know, I could probably take their forearm and just break it in half. There is no density. Their estrogen is completely crashed. Their lipid panel is completely crashed. Everything about them is terrible. They are just a walking time bomb ready to drop. And if you look at the number of bodybuilders that have dropped dead, sometimes it wasn't even in regards to the, the, the type of drugs they were taking. It was the AIs that were crashing their estrogen levels and making them destroying them basically from the inside out. If you are having estrogen levels of any kind, the first thing is you got to say to yourself, if you're taking weekly administration of testosterone, don't do that. Okay. The guys that have had E2 issues doing weekly administration, once they've moved to daily and given themselves a smaller dose every single day versus one big dose, a lot of these guys, their issues go away. Okay. Um, that's the first of all. Second of all, it may be that you're just taking too much testosterone for right now and your body is just having a hard time handling it. Okay. You can temporarily lower your dose, see if the symptoms go away. And if they do, maybe slowly over time, bring them up. Perhaps you just went up too far, too, too high, too fast. 
And that's what's causing this issue. In regards to using an AI, it can be used on occasion. And yes, I've, I've told everybody in the group, you should never use an AI, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you can use an AI on occasion. <clears throat> if you are developing gynecomastia, the slightest, you're getting itchy nipples, um, you're getting massive amounts of water retention, you're getting, you know, your mood is just all over the place. You can temporarily, and I stress the word temporarily, take a very small dose of an AI to bring things down temporarily until your symptoms resolve. And once they've resolved, slowly wean yourself off the AI. And typically, your symptoms should, should uh, stay away. The problem with the most of you is you've learned from the bro science guys and you're like, okay, well, if I'm on TRT or if I'm taking testosterone, I'm taking anything, I need to get on AI right now because I need to make sure that I don't get gyno and I need to make sure that all these other things and you just, they just stay on it long term. And long term AI use is going to completely destroy your lipid panel. It's going to completely destroy your bones. It's going to completely destroy your cardiovascular health your heart, it's going to destroy so much stuff, it's going to be like a slow poison over time. And if you're anything like me, you're taking testosterone to get healthier, okay? Taking an AI is just completely going against everything you're trying to accomplish, okay? You don't do it. If you have these issues, you can take it temporarily until symptoms resolve and you get off. But a lot of guys, they'll get issues and they're like, oh, I'm starting to retain water and I feel bloated. I've spot, talked to Keith about it and he said, Sometimes these guys just don't give it enough time for their bodies to normalize. And all this water retention stuff that they had would have went away on its own anyway had I not even given them anything. He says, usually what I'll do is I'll just give them like a mild diuretic just to flush some of the water out of them. And then once that's done, they stop and they're fine. And, and that's the end of that. You have to stop worrying about estrogen. Don't, if, if, if you're worrying about it, stop measuring it. Stop measuring it. It's not that. Okay, what is gyno caused by? Gyno can be caused by too high levels of testosterone, too low levels of testosterone. It can potentially be caused by estrogen if you are genetic, genetically predisposed to it. Okay, I'm genetically predisposed to it. I have some very, very mild guy that I've had it for ages. As soon as I adjust my dose with testosterone dose, it'll flare up and I go, oh, and then it goes away. Um, if I eat soy products, it flares up. Uh, we go to a sushi restaurant and you get those little uh, edamame or whatever the hell they're called, those little beans. If I eat too much of those, it'll flare up. Um, I've gotten flare-ups with natural supplements. I've gotten flare-ups with, with vitamins. I've gotten flare-ups with minerals. I've gotten flare-ups with herbs. Okay, I'm just genetically predisposed to it. And if it was really, really an issue and it was really getting out of control, I would just go get surgery and get it done. But I cannot in good faith tell myself, well, I'm predisposed to this, so let me just stay on an AI full time to protect myself against that little swelling I might have. No, you're going to protect yourself from this little swelling you might have, but you're killing your health. Okay, guys, you're killing your health. It's, it, your health is, is, is a priority. This little lump either will stay maybe a little lump, maybe it'll go away, and if it becomes an issue, get surgery, get rid of it, be done with it. That's it. That's all. Okay, so I hope that's kind of clarified things. Yes, sure.